Hi and welcome back to Dev Explaining channel. Today we are going to install Jupyter Notebook and I'm also going to give you some reasons why that's a good thing to have. Uh, the instructions, I will be running these for Windows subsystem for Linux, but same approach would also work for MacBooks and uh, Linux because I've been using the same approach with them as well. Um, there are alternative ways of installing things. They include Anaconda or Conda system, uh, awesome way to get it set up for a Windows device as well. However, today I will be showing you my setup. So let's get started. So any links I'm going to show you as always are in the description section of the video. Uh, first link to share is jupiter.org. That's the place where you can understand what this is about and also get some documentation instruction and the tool itself. Uh, Jupyter is basically an awesome way to combine your code and your documentation. It's a great place because it gives you rapid feedback loop and you can combine any, any plotting graphics uh, with your code. It's a great place for data, data exploration phase of data sciences. So you can grab any kind of data whether it's over network or in a file locally, and you can start cracking at it, you can try to get some insight into how it's composed of, how clean it is, uh, etc. And the good thing is that once you have done some exploration, you have some results, it's rather easy to grab that notebook that contains both the documentation and the graphics and the code, and you can distribute it and have somebody else be able to repeat the same experiments. So I think uh, pretty awesome. It's great for learning. It's great for uh, starting with data work. So let's see how we can actually access that one. Um, here is a link to try it in your browser. So if you are coming to this as a new person, uh, this is awesome, awesome way to experiment without installing anything. However, today we are going to install it. So I'm going to click this one. And by the way, Today, the Jupyter Lab is like the default installation. Uh, it used to be Jupyter Notebook, but right now Jupyter Lab has matured enough that it's kind of the default. So that's what we are going to install today. Uh, the same instructions would pretty much apply also for Notebook, but there is some subtle differences. I also mentioned that uh, I'm not going to go through the Anaconda route, but there's a link also for that one. If you would like to see me do a video on this approach, do let me know in the comment section, of course. And by the way, if you like my content so far, show the love by clicking that like button as well. But uh, I'm not going to go into details on that because I'm going to show you the second option, which is install using pip. And it is simple as this one, but you do need some prerequisites that I'm going to also discuss. And if you like the classic experience, it's also documented a little bit lower. But let's uh, focus on this one. I'm going to install my notebook like this and then quickly show you what you can do with it. And by the way, near the end, I also have a few tips, extra bonus tips to share. So stay tuned for those as well. But let's open my command line. So if you have seen my previous videos, you know that I like Linux experience, but I have Windows here. So I'm using Windows subsystem for Linux to have a typical uh, Linux Ubuntu um, environment within my Windows. And uh, here I have uh, a folder where I have been playing with this. Let's go there. Yeah. So the prerequisite for everything is to have Python. So as, as long as you can do Python version you are set to go with the very simple installation. However, just to kind of explain how I have set it up, I'm using PyEnv and I have a whole another video for this one. And if I say PyEnv versions, you can see uh, that I have multiple versions of Python installed. So I have uh, that other video that I'm going to link here as well, if you, if you are curious about this one. But I like to have multiple versions of Python so that it's very easy for me to like swap between different versions. And also it's very easy for me to set up project specific environments where I only have the libraries that I currently need. And therefore, 
I first set up PyEnv, then I set up some virtual environments. Um, the other video goes into details how to do that. But currently I'm running Jupyter's virtual environment. It's set for this uh, folder that I'm using. And uh, any uh, libraries that I install go to this one, not the other one. Okay, so I think that's it for the setup. Let's go and do the installation. So installation is simple as this pip install Jupyter lab. I already have it installed, so this just kind of confirms it. But in case you don't, at this point, you would be pulling a lot of stuff over network. After you are done, uh, now it's possible to run the Jupyter lab. Option one would be to do exactly like it says here. So you just say Jupyter lab. But there's also other option, which is Python module um, Jupyter lab. Yeah, either way is fine. Doesn't really matter. However, however you like to do it. However, when I run this in my Windows subsystem for Linux right now, I do get one error. It's mostly aesthetics, but let's get rid of that. So, <clears throat> problem being that my my uh, Windows subsystem for Linux is not kind of connected to the uh, user interface outside this environment. It, it's possible to do it, but it's quite it takes a little bit more effort. So in my case, uh, when I typically run something within here, I don't directly open Windows, but instead I have some connection between them. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to adjust this a little bit. There is some switches and one of them is no browser. So if I run my Jupyter lab in no browser mode, the error goes away because then it figures out that it's not going to try and open browser automatically. Instead, I grab this unique token URL and uh, I go to my browser and simply open it. And there you go. Here is my Jupyter notebook. Okay. So uh, I wanted to share quickly a few extra tips. So let's go through them. Tip number one is your um, a theme. So as you can see, I have set up dark theme. It's in my user settings. And that's why uh, it's set up like this. So I can change it from here. If you happen to like light theme, uh, here you go. But it's bad for my eyes. So I prefer the dark one. You can easily go back and forth here, set, set up other things. Uh, second thing, uh, here you can see a little trick how to install extra libraries. So when we go onwards with data science work, uh, there is some must have libraries that you pretty much always are going to set up NumPy, Pandas, and Matplotlib. More about these in the upcoming videos. And by the way, if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, uh, should do so and click the bell icon. Then when I make the new videos, you will always get no notified about them. But anyways, if I put simply percentage mark here and do pip install NumPy, then I get NumPy. So this is the way, a very easy way to install libraries while in the notebook. Alternative way would be to go back to command line and do pip install numpy there. But this one I can I can document in the notebook what I'm needing. Uh, we have a little bit of Python code here, some imports and a simple plot, but I think uh, this demonstrates the awesomeness of Jupyter notebooks. Because if I run the plot, it's just generating random numbers every time I run it and plotting them on the screen. But the way you can combine code and graphics here and also documentation. So here is a little, little block cell of uh, uh, markdown syntax. So the way you can combine all these and you can even put uh, links to YouTube videos here, even my videos are possible. So uh, this is simply awesome how rapid feedback loop you can get with this and you can combine that all and kind of in, a, in one package that you can easily share and distribute. And that's mostly the reason why I enjoy Jupyter so much and why we are doing this video right now. Okay, then I have one final tip to show you. So uh, I don't, don't want to dive into any deeper. We can do another video, uh, by the way, on how to actually uh, get started with the notebooks. 
but uh, I'm not going to include here, not to make it too long. If you like to see that, again, you know the drill, drop me some feedback. If there is demand, I will definitely do a video on that one, how to get started. But you will anyways be seeing uh, some of my upcoming videos where I, I will be diving into data in a more practical sense. Okay, but let's go to last tip that I wanted to show. Um, let's say that uh, I don't want to go all through all this hassle. So if I don't want to use this in a browser, what could I do? Well, many of the modern IDs have awesome plugins and you have seen me use VS Code on this channel before. So the cool thing is that as long as you have installed Python extension into your VS Code, uh, it, uh, it now comes with uh, also Jupyter Notebook support, meaning that if I have the Jupyter Notebook here that I have created, by the way, uh, you can create them also in, in, in here like uh, Control shift p Jupyter. If you have the plugin, then you can find the comments here and it's possible to create your notebooks like so. Here would be the comment. But I already have the notebook. Just wanted to point out that you can do exactly the same thing. So I'm pressing Ctrl Enter to execute this. Pip install NumPy. We already have NumPy because I'm running with the same virtual environment. So it has all the same things. Let's import the libraries. Let's do some random plotting. Same thing. Ctrl Enter is always executing the cells. And you can see the results here. And we do have some simple controls here. It's not as full featured as the full Jupyter Lab experience, obviously, but it's pretty awesome. And there is one big benefit of using this as opposed to using the notebook in the browser. And that would be having access to all your plugins within your VS Code. So you get the IntelliSense plugins, yes, but you also get any GitHub Copilot plugins, etc. So I haven't actually decided where I enjoy working more. I, I have been alternating between these. Both are awesome experiences and surprisingly simple. Okay. But uh, for today's episode, I just wanted to, as fast as possible, cover how to get started with, with uh, Jupyter Notebooks because they are awesome. And I will be coming up with more future videos where you will see what we can do with these. And as I mentioned, I have options to do other tutorials if you want to see the Anaconda route, or if you want to see me do like 15 minute tutorial on how to efficiently use all the keyboard shortcuts and some examples what you can do here. I can happily do that if you, if you choose so. Just leave me some feedback. And as always, the likes keep my channel and videos alive and help it grow. So drop the like if you like the content here. Otherwise, and anyways, See you in the next video in the future. Bye bye.